Good day, welcome to Dorby Works. So today I want to address something that I often read online or hear from messages from all kinds of questions on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, tuners like you and I. They often ask me, what is the best performance item? The best performance item, let me show you, is this simple fuel system. All right, this is the same fuel system I use on all the custom builds that we build here at Dorby Works. And I'm about to install one here on this Joker project. On a Honda Ruckus, you're going to need an angle car planche to keep your carburetor level. Example, intake carburetor will be installed right here and it will be level depending on the angle you're at so let me introduce to you these parts right here and go over them so you have an understanding this is what works for us here I'm after results so I hope that this information helps you get better results this is the same carburetor we've been using to build our bikes, all our bikes, from 150cc all the way up to 232cc. You're going to have people saying there's uh, 26 is better, 28 is better, 30 is too big, but I only use 30. This is a 30 millimeter OKO Authentic. I order directly from OKO. We're a distributor for them. We have it CNC polished, so it's machine polished. Can't get no better than this. And it has an angle top so it doesn't collide with your seat. And it's very simple. No power jet, no extra things to complicate the tuning of this carburetor. I'm going to take it apart and show you how to jet this. It's very simple. Our fuel kit comes with pilot jets and main jets. Before we send it to you, this carburetor will be already pre-jet. Meaning it will have a baseline for you to start at with a 40 pilot and a 125 main. That's what we recommend between 150 and 170 cc, but it will all change depending on your elevation and the temperature where you're located. We'll explain to you down the line in the video, so watch the entire video on how to tune your bike and what's needed. This is the intake manifold. This is the best one that I recommend. It has a replaceable flange here. The Intake itself is aluminum, so it'll never go bad. What you can just replace is just this flange. So don't get fancy with it. This is an intake filter. Sometimes we run a pre-filter on top to protect it from the dust. And this is our fuel pump. We use on our bikes, like I emphasized, a Honda Makuni fuel pump. This is made in Japan or sometimes Mexico depending on where you source these it's the same but it's an authentic Makuni fuel pump this works the best for vacuum for 150 cc and up we don't use the 50 cc fuel pump and complicate it with other things that may go bad that haven't been used for a long time this is what we've been using for 15 years it works it's simple simple results easy don't complicate your life we also include fuel lines and vacuum lines. So check out the rest of the video on the details on how to jet, how to take this guy apart, and how to tune your bike. So stay tuned. What's going on? So I put this portion together to show you our fuel system. This bike has been sitting for a month. We haven't had a time to ride it. It's cold, grabbing the header. This bike as well, it's cold, grabbing the header, suction the motor, hasn't been turned on, it's not warmed up, they've been sitting. So I want to emphasize how easy a proper fuel system is. We use a McCuni vacuum fuel pump system on all these bikes. There's no variation. The key on, you're popping the choke, make sure you grab the brake, safety, tap, once to warm up your lithium battery and hold it down until fuel gets into your carb and then it will start 
And once it starts, you'll hear it get rich. Once it's rich, you drop the choke and your bike is ready to run. So check this out. It's priming. So like I said, it's been sitting. Now it's gonna idle for a little bit. Heels getting in there, gonna get out the air. Drop the choke, good to go. Let's do it again. We're gonna raise the choke, key on, warm up the battery, brake. Let the carb warm up. Drop the choke. Both bikes are idling. This is a vacuum fuel system with our OKO, with our jets. This is the simple system we use on our build. So make your own decision. Keep your life simple. Enjoy riding. So welcome to the section where I show you how to take apart your carburetor, how to adjust it, and explain a couple of things to you. So first off, this is the top of the angle. This is a D-slide carburetor. This is your choke mechanism. This function is to create a choke, which is a vacuum, to create pressure to your vacuum fuel pump. That way it sucks up fuel into the inlet portion of the carb this is where the fuel goes in this is just a breather do not block this this is your overflow valve if your carburetor tilts over if your bike flips over this will drain all the fuel out for safety this is going to be your air idle screw raises the idle when you turn this clockwise to the right this will raise the position of the slide and allow more air to go in and raise your idle. You don't necessarily want to max this out. Another way you can adjust this is also by adjusting the air fuel. Air fuel can be richened or leaned out. So in the beginning, when you're tuning your carburetor, before you start the bike, you want to turn it all the way to the right, close it, and then you want to turn it two full turns out so one two two turns out so this will give you two turns to the left and two turns to the right meaning you have on your pilot jet which i'm going to show you in a moment four adjustment points to play with if it's going to need more fuel or less fuel so the reason for this is often if it's getting too much fuel you can back it out by going to the left and removing fuel from the pilot, which means your idle. If your idle is getting too much fuel, it's going to choke out your spark plug. It's going to be black. If it's not getting enough fuel, as your bike's idling, the idle is going to surge and go higher because it's not getting enough gas. It's going to run lean, which can damage your engine either way too rich or too lean. All right, let's get to opening the bottom of the carb so you can see how to jet it, meaning how to change the jets by adding or removing fuel with different jet sizes. You're going to need a Phillips head, also a flat head to take out the pilot. Our carburetors have been pre-jet for all my GY6 guys out there. That are building 150 cc and up to make your life easier that way you can take this carburetor out of the package and put it on your bike and start tuning and riding so you don't have to guess all right once these two screws are out remove the bottom it can be a little tricky make sure that this gasket is flat you can use some gasket stay to keep this from 
bubbling up over time, which I highly recommend. Here's a close up. This is going to be your main jet. And then that small slot is your pilot jet. To remove the main jet, you're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench to hold the main jet holder. And you're going to use a 6 millimeter socket or wrench. And you're going to turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. Do not over tighten or Put too much torque these are very very soft jets all right this is like a brass this one is already pre-jet it's a 128 your main jet will vary on your top end that's the main function of this hex main jet depending on where you live, if you live out west and in higher elevations, you're going to use a smaller jet than that. Um, you can tell when you're accelerating and it sounds like it's very, very rich and deep, like a popping, bogging sound. I'll demonstrate in another video on when I'm jetting to give you guys a little more explanation with real time. And then here... I'm going to show you the pilot jet. This pilot jet is responsible for your idle to mid range. Here it is. It's a small pilot and it is a 40. So it's pre jet 40 and 128. This is how you can remove them to add or remove fuel. So you don't want to just change these just to change them. You want to have an understanding if you need to add fuel or remove fuel. So it's important if you're tuning your carburetor to have a jet kit. This is your float. This determines the level. It's already been set. If you happen to damage it, you can reset the float level by bending this tab. But you don't want to mess with this. It works well out the box so to reinstall this you line up this hole right here and you want to kind of put this in under the float and it'll pop right in first you want to hand tight these screws Then you can tighten it up with a screwdriver. So be patient when you're jetting your carburetor. Next part I'm going to show you is how to put the cable in. You're going to remove the top of the inlet. This one has a angled inlet. So when you're closing your seat on the Honda Ruckus builds or your Mad Dogs or different bikes out there, it has less of a chance for it to bind or get pressed down or damage your cable. So once I open this, there's going to be a bunch of different parts. We're going to have a gasket under here. Fresh, it's going to be on there very good. But you want to take it out initially so you get into the habit of not damaging it. Because sometimes when you're trying to install the cable, you can kind of crunch it and you're going to have an air leak. Put the spring aside, and you're going to slide out your assembly. This is your D slide assembly, your spring holder, and this is your needle jet. You can change these. The needle position isn't in the middle. This is for fine tuning it if you're an advanced tuner, but the jet needle jet that's included works really well. There are different ones once you go into the very high end bigger engines where you want to refine every crisp rpm you can do it up to you but first learn the simplicity of just changing your pilot and your main and working with your air fuel all this can be done without any fancy wide bands or anything just take a look at your spark plug to see if it's brown which is where you want to be how crisp it is how Id how good your idle is and how smooth your top end acceleration is. Rideability is key. So 
with all these items taken apart to put the cable in first you're gonna thread the cable in here but before all that I have the throttle mechanism right here to show you we have a NCY needle bearing throttle it's like the best smoothest one because it has a needle bearing inside next I'm going to show you our throttle cable is already threaded in here. Got the cable in here. You're going to want to put some grease in here before you start using it. I'm going to put it on this second slot. Show you a better view here. There's many slots positioning depending on your cable length. The cable we offer has adjustments here. Also in the middle. This is the first part you want to install. Put it back on your handlebar. Put it on your stop. Make sure it's not stuck, it's not bound. When you pull the cable, you're going to see this end retract or come out. Make sure I'm not greasing this cable right now because I'm not going to be using it yet. Just want to show you for the installation purpose. Put the housing back together. All right, cable moves freely. On to the next part. Let's get close up. Here is the top of the cable. I'm going to insert it in this hole. Right here. And you're going to want a little more slack than this. So I'm going to have to adjust the cable length. All right, so let's first insert cable into the top holder. Next, you're going to grab your spring, hold these guys together. Let the spring come out. This is the part that's going to sit in your slide. You're going to have your plastic holder right here. There is a bevel. It's round. So you want to make sure it goes into your D slide properly. Make sure your needle jets sit flush with your C-clip in there. So your notch right here is going to stay right in here and then you're going to release the plastic once that's in there and it's going to hold the assembly together just like this may take you a few tries when you're not used to it another easy way is to first put your carburetor and your intake on you've got the intake right here pop your carburetor on and adjust it later your gasket insert the D slide tighten this up you want to make sure it's not loose you go riding you don't want it to rattle loose come out on you All right, so after this is installed, you will see the slides in there good. On your initial start, you're going to pop the choke right there. Once your idle is good, or once it gets fuel, you want to lower the choke. You may need to restart the bike if your adjustments are not set yet. You're going to either raise this to the right to raise your idle. Or to the left to lower it. It's too high. Your idle wants your idle is good around 2,500 RPM or so. You're also going to want to play with your air fuel. Remember all the way in, and then two out. 
Let's do that again. All the way in. Closed. So that's all the way rich. If you're all the way rich and your bike is still idling very high, even if you lower the idle and you rev it and it rolls back up, you want to put a bigger pilot jet. A bigger one. So the setting is going to be two full turns out. That's the nicest point you want to be. That way when you're riding on a daily basis, you can either go one in or one out, which you won't really need to do unless you have a drastic temperature change. So this is installed. You have your adjustment here. You want to be able to tug on the cable. The carb is not bolted down yet, but take a close look. I want to be able to tug on the cable and not have any play come out of the carburetor. Otherwise your cable can get damaged. So when I pull the throttle right here, I want to be able to raise the slide smoothly. So that's the installation. I'll be posting more videos on how to test and tune and jet. So stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for checking this out. We'll be posting more riding and building and more tips. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment below or email me at dorbyworks at hotmail.com if I can help you with your project and build. Take care.